Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Carpet Labs. Um, in today's video we're going to be discussing or elaborating on the concept of the four spheres. Okay, so we're going to start off by thinking about the lithosphere. Okay, so we're going to go through each one, um, kind of constructing this mind map as we go. Okay, so in Greek, when this word litho refers to rocks. Okay, so we're thinking about it in terms of the crust and upper mantle of the earth. Okay, so if we're thinking about one of the follow-up activities that we'll do is this idea that, that Earth has kind of this layered sort of structure. Um, and so it's kind of we're thinking right on this very outside kind of part section of the Earth. Okay, so we're thinking about rocks and minerals. Okay, with, we might also be thinking about things like ores for, say, mining. Okay, we might be thinking about the sort of substances we can get, like iron or gold or silver. Okay, there are all sorts of things that we might encounter and extract from the lithosphere. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of this topic focusing on the lithosphere because we're going to be looking at it in terms of, um, uh, yeah, because because we're thinking about those those plates on the outside of the Earth having a, having a significant impact. Okay, we then let's have a look at the atmosphere. Okay, so I'm going to use red for this one. So apologies if that makes it a little harder for you to read. Okay, so we're thinking about the atmosphere. Okay, so we're thinking about the layer of gases surrounding Earth. And I might actually go back and change that to be layers, plural. Okay, because what we have here is that if there's, there, is, there are multiple kind of layers to it. If we imagine this to being the surface of the Earth, you know that we have, you know, this is our Earth, then there are different layers that it kind of extend as we move further and further out from Earth. You know, so some of the gases that we're thinking about, say oxygen, we're thinking about nitrogen. Okay, we might be thinking CO2. Um, some of those sorts of different things are what we care about at this particular, um, in that, that part of our sphere. Okay, we're then going, now let, let's take a look and, at the hydrosphere. Okay, so we're looking at it in terms of hydro means water in Greek. Okay, so hydro being water. Okay, so we're thinking about it in terms of salt water. So all the Earth's water. We've got salt water and we've got fresh water. Okay, so salt water, so we're thinking typically about the oceans. Um, fresh water, then we might be thinking about freshwater lakes or rivers. Um, we might be thinking about glaciers. So um, yeah, glaciers or kind of um, ice, you know, ice in, in a range of different forms. Okay, we're thinking about it in terms of precipitation, like rain and snow. All of these, because they contain water, are part of the hydrosphere. We've also got clouds, which seem to kind of connect between the two here. Okay, because they are made up of water vapour, but we find them up in the atmosphere. Okay, so they're part of the hydrosphere because they also contribute to things like the water cycle. Okay, which is something that we consider when we're thinking about the hydrosphere. Okay, and so now let's focus our attention at the end on the biosphere. Okay, so I'll pick a nice green for the biosphere, seems rather appropriate, don't you, don't you think? Okay, so this idea um, of living things. Okay, so wherever they may be found, plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, whatever, would be part of the biosphere, okay? Um, so basically, we would find them interacting with or, you know, inside all other spheres. Perhaps, you know, we're thinking about birds that would fly in the atmosphere or fish that live in the ocean. We're thinking about plants or animals that live on the ground or under the ground. Um, they are all part of our biosphere. So we're thinking about features that are biotic, as being part of our biosphere because bio means life. Okay, that's that's I don't think that's an overly hard association for you to make. You know, that's what we're talking about. Biology is the study of living things. Um, and so what we're we're kind of looking at here is that <clears throat> each part of the earth we can we can kind of consider to be di different aspects will be put into one of these categories about you know whether based on where we find it or what it's made of. Um, or kind of how it inter interacts with one another. But part of the reason that we're going to focus in this topic is that 
there are different ways that these spheres will interact with one another that then typically also kind of connects together with natural disasters. For example, if we were to take a, a, um, take a volcanic eruption, occurs in the lithosphere, you know, we're thinking about rocks underground, but then it spews toxic gases up into the atmosphere. So it might, you know, poison the, the clouds, making acid rain, or it might release toxic gases that kill things. So that kind of affects the biosphere. Maybe the actual the lava that erupts actually heads down into the ocean and actually, you know, it helps to, to or, or kind of changes things in the, in the ocean. Um, and then maybe, it, you know, it makes new rock and that sort of thing. So you can see that um, these sorts of events are connected and connect the spheres together, okay? And so that there are different ways that they can overlap or connect with one another. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.